knees together. Amen. It is a beautiful thing when the people of God come together and magnify the Lord. It is a beautiful thing when we don't worry about our backgrounds, our situations. We don't worry about our socioeconomic level, but we come together and we focus on one thing, and that is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is power in worship. There is power in praise. I want you one more time to join me for the next few moments, and let's lift up the name of Jesus. Don't worry about anything that's outside of these four walls. Let's focus on Him. Let's focus on His will. God, we surrender to You. We ask You to let Your Spirit move in this place today. Let Your Shekinah glory flow. We release healing. We release power. We release Your name in this place today. Let the anointing of Your Spirit meet every need. Father, we give You glory. We know that You are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let Your Spirit move and we give you glory and praise and honor in the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. God, we glorify you and give you praise in this house. Hallelujah.
in this house come on it's at the name of Jesus that sickness has to flee it's at the name of Jesus that every devil in hell trembles come on why don't you shout the name of Jesus in this house this morning come on it's at the name of Jesus that every struggle and every situation begins to flee from your life come on somebody shout the name of Jesus in this house Jesus 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 we worship you today hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated this morning in esta mañana si necesita es un servicio bilingüe si necesita audífonos estamos traduciendo si necesita audífonos por favor en la parte afuera de, del santuario están los audífonos en esta mañana amén gracias hermano presa y a todos los latinos dicen gloria a Dios en esta mañana and praise the Lord how many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning come on I like what I feel in this place I feel the power and the presence of Almighty God in this house. 
And there is just no telling what God can do in this place today. Here at the POK, we're going to give you another opportunity to worship this morning through the giving of our tithes and offering. Here at the POK, we have three ways to give. If you need to give by cash or check, you can raise your hand and our ushers are making their way through the congregation this morning and they can give you an envelope. You can also give electronically at the Pentecostals.today by clicking on the giving tab. And as you get your contributions ready this morning, we want you to pay attention to the screens. We have some video announcements. Welcome. It's our pleasure to have each of you here with us today. We'd like to share some upcoming events happening here at the POK. On Wednesday, August 28th, there will be a membership experience class. Here, new members will have the opportunity to connect with our pastoral staff and learn more about the history and the future of the church. For more information, you can visit the Next Steps booth in the foyer. On August 25th, Spanish will be having a prayer meeting located in the Youth Sanctuary at 7.30. If you have any questions, you can see Brother Saul Korea for more information. We hope to see you there. Ladies Prayer takes place every Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, you can sign up your family for family prayer at the Next Steps booth in the foyer. Sunday, September 1st, there will be no p.m. service. Immediately after a.m. service, we will have a back-to-school fellowship service. There will be food and fun free of charge. Be sure to join us. If you are a guest, we invite you to connect with us in the foyer at our Next Steps booth. Once again, thank you for joining us on this Sunday here at the Pentecostals. Hey Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? One more final announcement this morning. If you're interested in joining the POK's Bible quizzing team, this morning after service, the Reynolds, Sister Reynolds, Brother Reynolds is here on the keyboard. Sister Reynolds, I don't see you in here, but if you are in here, raise your hand. They'll be having a meeting right after the morning service here in the sanctuary for all of those who would like to participate help out or get in more information about Bible quizzing. The ages for that are 6 through 18, and I heard somebody say it behind me, but tonight we are starting revival with Victor Jackson. How many of you are excited about Brother Jackson being here? But the good thing is he won't just be here tonight. He'll be here Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Come on, how many of you are excited for what God's going to do in this revival? Amen. So as our ushers make their way to the front, we're going to go to the Lord and pray his blessings over the tithe and offering. And then you can come forward and bring your gift unto the Lord. Jesus, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you bless us financially. God, help us today, God, to sow into your kingdom so that your kingdom may grow, God. Bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver, God, and bless our church today. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Come and give unto the Lord.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Have you found that power to be real in your life? Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to the person beside you. Smile at them. Shake their hand. Give them a high five. Say, it's good to be sitting next to somebody as good looking as you. Now, if you had to tell a story there, we're going to have a time of repentance here in the front, immediately following service. God bless you. You can be seated. We want to welcome each of you to the Pentecostals this morning. And if I could have your attention for just a moment, I want to make a, what, what uh, hopefully will be an announcement of clarification. So we are, as you can see, ¿Cuántos dice Gloria a Dios? Amen. So you can see we have our Spanish ministry in the main auditorium this morning. We are knee deep in the construction over there. We're at a critical stage where we're hanging the ceiling. The sheetrock is in there, the insulation's in there, and because we're at the stage we are with the construction, it was impossible to have Spanish service this morning. So that's why we have the combined service. Now, what we need from you gentlemen is this week we need as many men who can come by and volunteer. There's a sign-up sheet at the connect desk. Come by, volunteer to help us get that ceiling hung. Help Brother Waller. Brother Waller, wave your arm over here. What a great, right over here. Wave your hand, brother. There he is right there. What a great worker. What a great man of God. We need your help this week. We want to tie all of that up, get the ceiling up, get the insulation in, so that next week our Spanish sanctuary is ready to go. Amen. So, gentlemen, if you would, come by the foyer, sign up on that desk, on a sheet on the desk, and we will try and get that done this week. Amen. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. We want to take this time to welcome our guests. If it's your first time or second time to be with us at the Pentecostals, you should have received a guest card on your way into the auditorium. There are some gifts associated with that. We want you to have them. So if it's your first time or your second time and you didn't fill out a card on the way in, lift your hand and the ushers will get that to you very quickly. Either your first or second time and you didn't fill out a card on the way in. All right. Looks like, hey, we got everybody covered. All right. Oh, right here in the front. Keep your hand up just one moment. Thank you. Ushers, help us, please. Thank you. Put your hand up just a moment longer. Thank you very much. Oh, two. All right. Thank you, Brother Bellamy. All right. Anyone else? Did I miss somebody over here on this side? All right. Looks like we have everyone covered. What I'm wondering is, Pentecostals, will you help me this morning welcome our guests? Huh? How about over here on this side? We're ready? Amen. So, uh, friends, guests, when I call your name or something that sounds like your name, if you just lift your hand so we can see where you're seated. Amen. We don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to greet you. I need another favor before we do that. We have people still arriving at church. So if there are empty seats next to you, if you could scooch over some, SOS, and then that way we can get all these folks seated because we've got people standing in the back and we'll have more as service goes on. All right. Guests, when I call your name, just lift your hands so we can see where you're seated. If I mispronounce your name, I apologize in advance. First time guest, Carrie Neely. Carrie, where are you seated this morning? Wave your hand at me. Over here on the right, friends of the Barnetts. God bless you. We're glad you're here today. All right, first time guest, Tanika Ward. Tanika, where are you at this morning? Oh, right here in the front. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Just moved into the area. We're glad you're here this morning. God bless you. All right, Consuelo Ramirez. Consuelo, donde estás? Ah, yeah, over here on the left. God bless you. We're so glad you're here today. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bellamy. First time guest, the Michael Neal family. Where are you folks at? Now, there's a whole, there, keep your hands up just a moment longer. We've got Michael, Tiffany, Michaela, Eli, and Madison. We're glad you guys are here today. God bless you. All right, Joe and Catherine Curry. Where are you seated this morning? Right here on the left. God bless you in the middle section. We're glad you're here. God bless you today. Amen. Did you catch him, Brother Quarren? Put your hands up one more time. He's, he's right there. Curry. There they are right there. Thank you very much. First time guest. Ruthie Wilson. Ruthie, where are you seated this morning? I'm looking. Somebody help me. Over here on the left. God bless you. We're glad you're here today. All right. First time guest, William Azate Giron. Donde estas, William? Where? Ah, 
here in the back in the center section. God bless you. We're glad you're here today. All right. First time glass, Glenda Umanzor. I think I got that right. Glenda, right here in the front. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Just keep them coming, Brother Bellamy. Thank you very much. First time guest, Gene Dorsica. Gene, where are you seated? Over here on the left. God bless you. We're glad you're here, sir. And that might be Jean. I don't know. Jean, all right. First time guest, Miriam Mullen. Miriam, where are you seated? Right here in the center section. God bless you. We're glad you're here today. All right. Special guest, Benjamin. This is Sister Furrow's son right there in the middle section. God bless you, Benjamin. We're glad you're here. Amen. You bringing me something else, Brother Sean? No? Okay. Let's all stand together. Now, I know, Pentecostals, you have kept track of where each and every one of these guests is seated. So make your way around the auditorium. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. Greet our guests. When the music comes up and the time runs out, make your way back to your seats. God bless you this morning. Another announcement, our young people in our preaching class are going out. Amen. Youth and preaching, you're dismissed at this time. You know where to go. God bless you.
Amen. Turn to somebody near you and just say these words. Say, I love the Lord more than you do. Amen. How do you know somebody loves the Lord? You know it by the way they live their life and part of that being their worship and praise. Amen. God's been good to us. Amen. See, God's been good to us. Amen. How many ever heard the, the phrase, God outside of the, out of the bed on the wrong side of the bed? I think it's something like that. Is that close? Got out of the bed on the wrong side. Got out of the wrong side of the bed. Got out of the bed. Got up on the wrong side of the bed. Okay, has anybody ever experienced what I'm talking about? You just got up, and from the very beginning, you were a little grouchy. The day was kind of bad. Anybody done that? Has anybody encountered anyone that got up on the wrong side of the bed? Amen. How do you change that? Don't get out of the bed, somebody said. Here's how you change that. When you get up and you find that your spirit's a little critical and you're a little negative and you're a little down, remember that your God rules and reigns above it all. Change your focus. It changes your attitude. Amen. So if you found yourself being a little negative this morning, let's start all over again, okay? Let's just pretend that you just got up and the first thing out of your mouth This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God is good. He's good all the time. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Our God is worthy of praise. Amen. I... I, I got up a few days ago. Let me think real quick. It was a week ago, it'll be two weeks ago this coming Wednesday, if I remember correctly, and our, our coming Thursday. I had arrived in Taiwan and uh, on Wednesday at 6 a.m. and on and on Thursday at 5:20 a.m., which would have been about 4:20 Wednesday afternoon here. I was talking to my wife on the telephone, and all of a sudden, the eighth floor of the hotel I was in, everything started shaking. And I started hearing noises, and there were doors banging and all kinds of noises, and the room was shaking. And I was startled, and I was like, what is it? And all of a sudden, it dawned on me, and I told my wife, I said, I'm in the middle of an earthquake. It's been a long time since I was in an earthquake. It was when I was a real little kid, and we had a little bit of a shaking in the house and pictures got sideways, but nothing like this. Noises, the room is shaking. I did not know what to do, so this is what I did. I jumped out of bed and I ran around to the other side of the bed. (laughs) Because I didn't know what to do. And then I dropped down on the ground and thought, I need to get underneath of this bed, but there was only about this much room. And I need to lose some weight, but I don't think that would help me. It's about six inches, and then I noticed the desk, and I thought, that suitcase that's under there needs to go. So I grabbed the suitcase, flung it out of the way, and I dove underneath the desk. And while I'm doing this, I'm hollering on the phone, I'm in an earthquake, I'm in an earthquake. And Carrie says, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the next thing I know, I find out an hour or two later, she's posted on Facebook, pray for my husband, he's in an earthquake. And you would think that was the worst of it. The next day, there was a typhoon. <laughs> and um, luckily, and we, they had prayed, and uh, the typhoon missed Taiwan, but it shut everything down. So um, we were supposed to have a, a seminar with church leaders, and that was canceled. But the following day, a week ago Saturday, had a, a leadership seminar with business leaders. 
right before I walked out of my office, service was just starting, and I got a phone call from my friend in Taiwan, and they baptized this morning one of the leaders from the business seminar was there last Saturday, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All total, in just a few months, the my contact in Taiwan from years ago when I went to my doctoral program, I told my wife that one day I would go to Taiwan. Well, here some months back, I was able to connect that person with my friend who's a missionary who now lives in Taiwan, just moved there. And since that point in time, they have baptized uh, several, four or five now have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thankful for that. And one lady whose leg was an inch short, one of her legs was an inch shorter than the other, God instantly lengthened her leg and filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for what God is doing. Amen. And I'm done now. I've been traveling a lot. and done. I'm done now with my travels, of international travels for this year. Good to be home. But like the Apostle Peter said, I go a fishing um, after service today. Uh, there's some of the men on the men's trip. And we are headed to Alaska, where our senior pastor is today. He's ministering there, but thankfully he got to go up with Brother Hammer's father-in-law a few days early and spend a little bit more time, and we are thankful for that. And uh, I know you all are going to have a great time tonight with Victor Jackson and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, expecting great things, and uh, very, very thankful for that. Amen. And welcome the Drosses home, and they have been traveling for the last... Sister sent here for the last two months, her and the boys, been in Brazil, and I had the privilege and honor to go there and minister in the early June, and they are part, or the end of June, and they are part of our home group, and so you never know, somebody you meet and you say, hey, why don't you come over to my house and eat? First of all, they came over to my house, I grilled out, and he, the withdrawals, married his wife from Brazil, and he lived half of his life in Brazil, and he's like a master cook. Brazilian like steaks and hamburgers and next time he comes over my house I am not cooking that's what I told somebody recently I said I will not cook grill ever again when he comes over my house he's getting a bowl of cereal and um, but we actually got together last night my wife fixed a meal and a uh, lovely meal of spaghetti and I didn't have to grill so thank goodness but miss our friends how many are part of a small group just raise your hand Amen. I, I want to encourage, just for a moment, and we're going to move on, but I want to encourage you, if you're not a part of a small group, stop by Next Steps out in the foyer on the way out and sign up. I'm telling you, you never know who you're going to meet, what's going to happen. It's exciting. It's a time of food, a time of fellowship. We do this on the second Wednesday of every month. So highly, highly encourage you, stop by, sign up. Nothing like being a part of the body. Amen. I want real quickly, while you remain standing, don't take long. Pastor Mayor, come on up here real quick. Were you scheduled to preach this morning? Okay, come on up here real quick. He can do this because he's like in season and out of season, the Bible says. And Pastor Mayor can flat out preach. So you want to, uh, uh, where's the translator? Brother President here? He's upstairs translating. I was getting ready to give you a translator. You, okay, they're translating upstairs, so you got it. Preach for about a minute or two. Gloria a Dios. A su nombre. A su nombre. My, the Lord has been good to us. Has the Lord been good to you? Has the Lord done something for you this week? The scripture says that this is the day that the Lord has made how many of you know that the God is in this day? So whatever your need is in this day, God is able to supply that need. God is able to do the miraculous in this day because this is His day. This is the day that He has created. So whatever your need is today, God can meet that need. Amen. I want you right now, I felt this earlier, I want to do this right now. If you need a healing, you need a touch of the Lord in your body right now, would you lift your hand? I know there's some. I've already talked to some. I said I would be praying with you. Look at the hands around you right now. Look at the hands around you. The body's going to minister to one another. I want you to find somebody right now with their hand lifted up, and we're going to pray. Pastor Mary's going to lead us in prayer. Find somebody with their hand lifted up right now in the name of the Lord. We're going to pray. God's getting ready to touch your body in the name of Jesus. 
Lord Jesus, we come before the throne of mercy right now. Lord, your word says, Lord God, that you are our healer. That you, are, Lord God, will restore our health. And Lord God, I pray for every temple of the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, that you would touch their bodies. Lord, that you would minister, Lord God, unto them in healing. In the name of Jesus, we release healing, Lord God, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus we speak healing in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise hallelujah praise God amen we sing a song around here on Sunday mornings I want us to sing that right now. I want the word of the Lord to speak to me. If you want the word of the Lord to speak to you, sing this as a prayer unto the Lord right now. Word of God, speak to me. I'm ready to receive. Word of God, speak to me. Matthew chapter 5, very familiar verse of scripture, Matthew chapter 5. And while you're turning there, I want to, along with all of our pastoral team, say thank you to all of our guests that are here with us. And several of you I got to meet, some of you I have not gotten to meet yet. But um, my name is Eugene Wilson. I'm the executive pastor here at the Pentecostals of Katy. And there's a lot going on around this campus. As has been mentioned today, the Spanish services are with us. Normally, they're taking place in our gym. And uh, the youth and uh, our preteen class has kicked off, a great kickoff with the preteen in the last, last uh, several weeks. Also, a campus in Louisville. So if you know anyone in Dallas, North Dallas, you point them in the direction of our campus in Louisville. God doing great things there. Matthew chapter 5. And reading in verse 10, a very familiar verse of scripture, Jesus is teaching. He says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Notice this, verse 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And yet we are to let our light shine, in verse 16, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So two things taking place. When your light is shining, one, there is persecution. Two, men's hearts are being changed and they're turning to God. Title of 
message this morning is don't hide it. Don't hide it. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to touch us today. Jesus, I pray that you touch us today. Give understanding, give direction, give clarity. And God, I pray that you do a marvelous work way beyond anything that I could do. We give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. Amen. You may be seated. I, um, I grew up in a pastor's home, and um, because of that, you often hear things like this. Are you going to grow up and be a preacher like your daddy? And uh, that used to scare the daylights out of me. And um, my dad had, was my pastor, and uh, when I was born, I'm the oldest of uh, four uh, children, and uh, my father was pastor in a little home missions church in Tipton, Indiana. And uh, so I, I don't remember those days. We moved away when I was four years old. And, um, and then we assisted my grandfather for about nine months. Then my dad began to pastor in, a, in another city. And so um, those were formative years, though, and I'm very, very thankful for them. But uh, all my life, my dad was, was a pastor. And... Um, People would, when they would see me, they say, are you going to grow up and be like your dad? Well, I'm like, no. Uh, you know, I want to be a farmer like my grandpa, uh, who also was a pastor, but it wasn't the pastoring part. It was the farmer part. And um, so, the, the, but being in the ministry scared me. So when I was asked at about the age of 13, year old, uh, 13 years old to preach my first sermon, it scared the daylights out of me. Now, I had some help. And that is, um, the youth leader said, uh, I'm going to give you your topic. Your topic is um, a light, and here's your candle, your, your prop. So I had a little candle, and uh, my message was the light. Thirteen years old, I walked to the pulpit. I took the candle out of the sack, and I said, this is my light. And that is as far as I got. I was looking at all these people who scared the daylights out of me. You, the audience, scared me. And I said, this is my light. And I started crying. And I was the first one in the altar. <laughs> I went immediately to the altar and I began to pray, and I know someone walked up to the pulpit and began to do something. I'm not even sure what all. I just remember I was in the altar, bawling my eyes out. I was convicted. I ran to the altar over these words, this is my light. <laughs> my mom was my um, Sunday school teacher for many of my early years. My grandmother was at, at one point in time. And um, I remember singing the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. And what we would do is we'd hold up our finger, <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And then we had the verse, don't let Satan, that was always cool it out, I'm going to let it shine, don't let Satan, it out, I'm going to let it shine, don't let Satan, it out, I'm going to let it shine. And when you're, you know, you're 10, 9, 8, somewhere in there, not only are you like doing this, don't let Satan blow it out, you're trying to blow your neighbors out. And then you're jerking your light away, don't blow my light out. And then we had the verse, hide it under a bushel, and then you'd holler out, no, I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm not even sure I even knew what a bushel was back then. I just knew that there was something that was going to try to hide my light 
And as a kid, as a little child, six, seven, eight years old, singing this song, I was making up my mind. Then it was becoming, these are formative times in your life. I was making up my mind, I am not going to hide it under a bushel. As an adult, I began to realize that if my light was going to shine, that meant I was going to encounter some things that, were not always pleasant. So I remember sitting in class, and I'm about the age of 12, 13 years old, when a young girl looks at me, she says, aren't you Pentecostal? And she said, I heard that you guys speak in, in like another language. What, what, what are y'all talking about? And you're hoping that she would like lower her voice because she's loud enough that she's drawing the attention of other classmates. And now other classmates are looking at me because she's talking loud and pointing her finger as she's saying, don't you talk in a different language? And I'm saying yes, but I'm not as loud as she is. And, and all of a sudden she says, go ahead and do that for me right now. And at 12 and 13 years old, I'm having my first encounter with someone who I had to recognize is this person trying to ridicule and make fun of and persecute, or is this person just flat out hungry? And I begin to realize that this person was not trying to ridicule and persecute and make fun of. Instead, this person was truly curious about what Pentecost was about. So I began to explain to her what it was about, and it was a couple years later, she went to a Pentecostal church and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Praise God. But there were other people sitting there who were looking at me going like, you do what? And then one of them said something about, do you guys play with snakes? And I'm like, not this guy. <laughs> I said, not this guy. I said, I'm scared to death of snakes. This is 12 and 13 years old. The, Jesus says in this verse of scripture, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. So the question is, are you experiencing persecution? Is this scripture relevant today? Does it have any bearing in our world today? Here's what research says. This is interesting. Research, this is according to a 2019 World Watch List. One out of every nine Christians worldwide are experiencing what they call high levels of persecution. From the top 50 world watch list countries alone, the top 50, over a period of a one-year study, this took place from October the 31st of 2017 until November of 2018. They found that there are 245 million Christians who are experiencing high levels of persecution. 4,136 of them during that time span of one year were killed for faith-related reasons. 2,625 Christians were detained without trial, arrested, sentenced, or imprisoned, and 1,266 churches or Christian buildings were attacked. 11, 11 countries scoring in the extreme level of persecution of Christians, and five years ago, there was only one, which was North Korea. In five years, We've gone from one nation scoring in high levels of extreme persecution to now 11 nations scoring in the extreme level of persecution. Here's the statistics according to the continents. One out of every 21 Christians in South America are experiencing high levels of persecution. And I wonder here right now that either you or a family member of yours came to America 
to escape persecution, would you raise your hand? Okay. There's none in here right now, but there's one right now in our sound booth. Brother Korea's family came to America because of persecution. One out of every six Christians in Africa are experiencing extremely high levels of persecution. One out of three Christians in Asia are experiencing high levels of persecution. And I know some of them personally. I was in a meeting a few years ago and I looked around at a room of about 25 pastors and I said to the, my host, how many of these guys have been in prison? He said, you should have asked the question, how many times? He said, because every single one of them have gone to jail. 95 to 98% of the population in Pakistan is Muslim. But check this out. There is a growing revival taking place right now in Pakistan. There are many hungry people. Just this past week, I talked to a former missionary in Pakistan who we brought out of Pakistan after 9-11 when things began to escalate in Pakistan. And he told me just this past week that right now we have over 160 thousand apostolics in Pakistan that are people baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost. And they are having meetings where hundreds and even thousands of people are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Pakistan. I want to just stop here just for a second and say that the devil and all of those who are helping him right now and trying to stop the church and put out the light, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. The early church experienced a great revival right from the very, very beginning. There were 3,000 that were added to the church, 120, then 3,000, and a little bit later, a few more. And then we find in Acts chapter 8, persecution began to, to uh, be inflicted upon the church in Jerusalem, and the church began to, to spread. And as the church began to spread, it began to turn its world upside down. So when the devil comes at the church with his fire, it backfires against him because you cannot put out the Holy Ghost fire. It's going to spread. You cannot stop what God is doing in this earth. Amen. In the Philippines, this is where I just returned. I was in Taiwan, then in the Philippines. In the Philippines, since the early 2000s, radical Islamic terrorists have been carrying out bombings, many of, that, many of them trying to persecute the church. In fact, Sister McKee was scheduled sometime last year to go to a meeting, and because of where the meeting was being held, uh, we, we, they didn't feel like it was safe to go and did not make their way, uh, she didn't make her way to that area of the country. You got to be very careful. The hotels we went to, they stopped every vehicle trying to enter into where the hotel was at to make sure that there's no bombs underneath of the vehicles. This, that was in Manila. And so it is growing, but what is happening to the Filipino church is amazing. The, the organization that I personally hold license with, me personally, is a growing organization within that country. In fact, it is the largest, the largest Pentecostal organization, apostolic Pentecostal organization in the world. It is larger than what is taking place in North America right now. It is the largest in the Philippines. They are having a tremendous revival with literally thousands and thousands of people receiving the Holy Ghost in those meetings. I want to say it again. You cannot put out the Holy Ghost fire. It doesn't work. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Now, I know some of you are thinking right now, well, what difference does that make to me? Because I don't live in the Philippines, and I don't live in Pakistan, and I don't live over in South Africa. I'm in America, and I got it made. Well, check it out. Things are changing even in America. 
So don't be like an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and say, well, it's not happening. This is what's happening in America. Recently, in the last year or so, a New Jersey teacher was suspended for just giving a student a Bible. A football coach was placed on leave for praying on the field, and an Atlanta, Georgia fire chief was fired for self-publishing a book defending Christian morality. He was fired. A little closer to home, since we all live in Texas, in March of this year, 2019, a Chick-fil-A was disallowed from opening a restaurant in San Antonio Airport following a vote from the city council. And the reason was because Chick-fil-A was founded and owned by the Catholic family and they're devout Christians and they have a long history of donating to Christian groups that adhere to traditional Mary's beliefs. And one of the council members in San Antonio said at the time of the vote, when they disallowed Chick-fil-A from coming to the city, they said, and I quote, that their Texas city did not have room in our public facilities for a business with a legacy of anti-LGBTQ behavior. And they praised the city's move, saying that it represented San Antonio becoming a champion of equality and inclusion. And this is despite the fact that Chick-fil-A has a long, undisputed track record of serving its customers without bias or discrimination. So Texas Governor Greg Abbott shortly after this exclusion of Chick-fil-A, he signed into the law a bill called Save Chick-fil-A. If you've never eaten at Chick-fil-A, you would know right now is a good time, if you have, to say hallelujah. Because they got the best chicken. He signed in a bill which stops the government from taking action against a company or individual for donating to religious groups, and the bill passed. I could go on and on, tell you stories after stories. The list is long. Here's my simple question. What in the world is going on? What is happening in our world today? What is happening in North America? What's happening in the United States? Christianity, based on Scripture, has taken a stance against homosexual activity for, for more than 35 centuries this has been the moral position in American culture until recent years. Pew Research Center reported in 2004 that 60% of Americans oppose same-sex marriage. 2019, just 15 years later, 60% who oppose the same-sex marriage now, 61% support it. Why the shift? Why the fighting? Why the tension? Why the Chick-fil-A episode? Why the Atlanta fire chief? Why, and I could go on and on, why? According to law professor Stephen Smith, and I've been reading this book, the title is The Pagans and Christianity in the City. He says that the reason is that the shift or this persecution against Christians is due to an ancient form of paganism that's become an orthodox in our world today. Now, I'm taking a little bit of time. I'm sitting here giving a little bit of foundation. I'm going to continue doing this for a moment, and then I'll, I'll preach for a little bit, okay? Is that all right? You know the difference between teaching and preaching? Teaching, you just talk, and preaching, you yell. So he says the shift is because of an ancient form of paganism that is arising. He says, and he goes all the way back to Rome, he says the Roman Empire was so intertwined with the state that Rome was in sense a kind of a magnificent mega church. And this world, this Roman's world, they did not typically imagine any higher good than flourishing here on this earth. In other words, and this is his words, they did not view anything higher than self 
as the ultimate authority. They did not view anything higher than self that would say, this is the way, walk ye therein. So let me just stop for a moment and just jump forward in some things I want to say. The reason we are where we are right now is because some years back, we started doing away with moral absolutes, and we embrace a relative message that could just change depending upon the situation, and it was all determining whether or not we thought it was good or wrong. It was all about us, not about a foundation built on the Word of God. And any time you start rejecting your foundation built on the Word of God that has some moral absolutes, and you start having your, abs- your truth arise from your discussions with one another, you eventually will find someone who's going to agree with you that says your lifestyle and your way of living is okay, and if you're okay, then we're okay, but there's a problem. When we reject the word of God and we are okay and you're okay, we're not okay. Amen. We're not okay when that happens. And he says, and this is Smith, he says what happens is that paganism believes that the highest authority is self. Not the word of God. And so if self is the highest authority, then whatever pleases self is what self is going to get. And anything that opposes self is opposing my right to pursue happiness. Therefore, it's morally wrong. This is what paganism says. I know I'm taking a little bit of time here today. I know I'm teaching, but I've got to help some people understand what's going on in our world and make sure that we are responding the proper way. (laughs) Paganism says that the highest voice of authority is me. My right to happiness what I like, what I want, what I feel, what pleases me. And if you are saying something that opposes that, then you are denying me of my moral right to happiness. So what happened in the Roman Empire, the reason they began to persecute Christians is because Christianity stood in the face of their so-called religion. Their form of religion was was to, to make sure that they could live out their life the way they wanted to live it out. The Romans believed that this world that we live in right now, nothing surpasses that. The experience on this earth, there is nothing else that could tell us how to live. It's what I think and what I want to do and how I want to live. So in other words, their former religion did not come from above. It came from within. And there's a problem with that because there's not one of us in this house today that are good. There's not one of us that can save ourselves from ourselves. We can put on our self-righteousness and we can look good and we can look the part, but on our own, without the grace of God, we have nothing. It's only by God's grace that we're saved. It's only by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. So the pagan world in the early church time, ancient Rome, Their religion did not come from above, it came from within, but in contrast to that, early Christianities, early Christianity believed in a heavenly city, they believed in a truth against which this world was going to be judged. That's a problem today, because our world has created a atmosphere that you cannot speak out against anything, because if you do, then you're judging me and that's wrong. But the person who says that is indeed doing the judging that they're saying is wrong. So in other words, there is an attempt to silence the voice 
of those who are taking a stand for the word of God because the word of God conflicts or opposes much of what you and I want to do. I don't want to be rude, I don't want to be ugly, I don't want to be nasty, but there's stuff within our flesh that is not right, that is not of God, that wants to act in ways that it shouldn't, do things it shouldn't, say things it shouldn't, look at things it shouldn't look at, act in ways that it shouldn't act, and if that is something else that is opposing me and is the word of God, then I don't want you doing that. Furthermore, you living that type of a life is also opposing me. So in other words, why don't you just believe what I believe? Because if you don't believe what I believe, then you are opposing me. This is the world that we live in right now. Secular culture, truth, moral authority does not come from above. It comes from within. So what we are experiencing, and this is what Smith says, and I tend to agree. What we are experiencing today is a renewal of the fourth century struggle between Christianity and paganism. It is a struggle seeking to reverse the revolution that Christianity was able to obtain in the fourth century. We stand against much of what our world stands for. We stand against it. That's right. And I don't want to get into naming all kinds of things, but I'm just going to say here today that much of what we as Christians believe based on the word of God is in opposition to how much of our world functions and operates even here in North America. I'll just say one word just for a moment, abortion. And I could give a whole lot more words. My point is not to preach against any particular thing that we stand against. My point is just to simply say that we as Christians, we are a light that cannot be hid. And that light is offensive too much of our world. So this is what we want. We want, because of this pressure, we want to live and let live. In other words, I will just smile, I will be polite, and just let me live my life, and I'll let you live yours but it doesn't work that way. This is my message right here. This is what I want to preach. This is what I felt led to bring to the Pentecostals of Katy. It does not work that way. We think that if we can just be tolerant, everything will be okay, but it doesn't work that way. And here's the reason why it doesn't work is because paganism wants to conquer you. And furthermore, you should want to conquer paganism. It is not God's will that any should perish. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Amen. God so loved the world. You should not be willing to set back and put your light under a bushel and attempt to hide it in an attempt to keep from being persecuted. Instead, let your light so shine before men that they may see it 
and be turned. Amen. The reason why we are experiencing what we are experiencing is because we're trying to conquer one another. Paganism is not going to allow you to live and let live. Paganism is going to try to conquer you because your light is an offense to them. But you and I should not hide our light under a bushel. Instead, we got to remain strong. We are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul writes, 2 Timothy 3 and 12, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will, will be persecuted. They shall be persecuted. Not they might If they go too far, if they let their light shine too much, they'll be persecuted. No, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. They shall be persecuted. So it comes down to this. You're going to have to join them or you're going to have to learn to take a stand. There is no middle ground. It doesn't work that way. Don't think that you can escape persecution. Don't think that you sitting back being quiet with your mouth closed and somehow everything is going to be okay. Don't think that because you're just being nice and smiling that somehow you're going to escape being ridiculed. Why would the Apostle Paul make such a, a sweeping statement as to say our message stands at odds with our world's mindset? It's because it does. It does. But here's the good news. Everybody ready for some good news? Matthew 5.10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And additionally, not only blessed are theirs for the Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they ever persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice what else Jesus said. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So this is what it comes down to. The unbelievers in your life that you are encountering are either converting or they are persecuting. And you say, well, they're not doing either one. Okay. You could be right. But ultimately, where it's leading is either they're going to join you or they're going to oppose you. They're going to join in or they're going to stand in against you. And the idea, the parable that Jesus gave is that no one, when he's lit his lamp, puts it under a basket. But instead, he puts it on a stand so that everyone can see the light and come to the light. The idea of the parable is that the light is to be revealed, not concealed. John 3, 20, Jesus says, For everyone who does evil hates the light, does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. So where does this leave us? Here's the question. Where does this leave us? The answer is, don't be afraid of persecution. Don't be afraid of being made fun of. Don't be afraid of ridicule. Instead, rejoice. Paul writes, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17, for this light, this slight moment of affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comprehension because we look not at the things which are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Jesus 
Bible says it like this about Jesus, that he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 6 and 10, all sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, Paul says, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So here's the conclusion of my message today. You ready for this? When you feel the pressure to fit in and to be quiet and calm down, one of you get this scripture for me, Psalms 40. When you feel the pressure to, to fit in and be silent and shh, don't, don't, don't let them know. And you feel this pressure. Be silent. They're going to make fun of you. If you stand out, it's not a good thing. When you feel that pressure, here's, here's what you need to remember. Psalms 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Did you catch that? He brought me out of a miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. And now I'm singing, hallelujah. He brought me out. He brought me out of a miry clay. He set my feet on, on a rock to stay. You think I'm going to be silent now? You think I'm going to be intimidated by the world around me when he brought me out? He put a song in my soul that I can't stop singing. He lit a fire in me that I can't put out. I can't hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine so that all the world can see it and glorify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to embarrass you guys. I know you guys are brand new. I think this is your first service you've been to, maybe the second one. I'm not going to try to embarrass you. First one. But y'all raised your hand a while ago about needing a healing touch right here. Yeah. I don't even know what all you need in your body. But I can tell you that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the fact that my dad was about 13, 14 years old, and there became a knock on the door, and they said, why don't you go with us to church? And they went to the church, and my uncle had been having seizures four and five times a week. Missed all of fourth grade because of his seizures. He had them for 10 years. And they walked into the house of the Lord, and on a Sunday service, my uncle, my dad's twin, went down to the altar God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, called him to preach, and healed him of his seizures immediately. <laughs> Brought him out of a miry clay, a situation where it felt as though that he was sinking, brought him out and put his feet on a solid rock. You think that the Wilson family is going to stop? Letting the light shine, blow it out, hide it under a bushel. No, it's not happening. I don't even know what it is that you need, but in the name of Jesus. Would you stretch your hands out right now to this young man in the name of the Lord? God, I pray right now for healing. I pray that you touch his body right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, the authority of your word, you send your word to bring healing. I pray right now for healing in the name of Jesus. God, I've seen you. 
bring miraculous miracles, God, of healing, of cancer. You delivered cancer out of the body. I've seen you do it more than one time in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, right now for that healing. I thank you right now, Lord, for that touch. I will lift up your name. I glorify your name. I exalt your name. I magnify you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Can I can I just say what I really, really feel led to say, and then I'm gonna stop. We you, you some of you, this is your first time here, you don't know what it's like. Pastor McKee often says stick six. Means come to six services. Because every service is going to be different. I promise you they're different. He and I are preaching styles totally different. And mine, you never know what it's going to be. I may be yelling one sermon, walking pews, the next sermon, standing stiff, teaching. We're, we're different. Every service is different. But I tell you one thing that is consistent, and that is that we are going to have a move of God. Every service, we're going to have a move of God. We're committed to it. Every service. Every service. No dead church. Every service. No dead church. We had a, a inspiration here a few weeks ago. It was contemporary gospel, and we don't do contemporary gospel, man. We like gospel. You know, our choir is singing Sunday night, man. We're getting with it, and we don't do contemporary gospel. And we had a concert, contemporary gospel, and I was sitting over here, and I thought, man, I don't even understand what the singer's saying. It's not my style of music. I don't get it. But I watched something happen. I saw young people that were connecting and responding. And the next thing I knew, the young couple that was here leading the concert, he opened up the altar and I saw young people go to the altar. I saw people being touched that I had not seen in my three and a half years of being here. It was amazing. And for all those that, whether you had to go to work the next day or you just couldn't take it anymore, you missed out. I'm telling you, you missed out. Because if anybody, if, if, this big if, anybody walked out of here because you thought, well, I, that's not for me. I, I don't get anything out of it. You missed out. We had three people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and one was baptized in Jesus' name. It was an incredible, or sorry, three baptized in Jesus' name, one received the Holy Ghost. It was an amazing, amazing service. Amen. I said it was an amazing service. So every service is a little different. Styles of preaching different. It's every now and then, you may even hear music that's a little different. But there's one thing that is consistent. His name is Jesus. Amen. I've been throughout Asia. I've been in meetings where it just took place in home. I've had to go in some places and put a baseball cap and secretly go into places I wasn't supposed to be. But I felt the same thing that I feel here today. His name is Jesus. I've been in services where it was 100 miles an hour. I've been in services where it appeared it was dead. And then all of a sudden, whew, his presence. His name is Jesus. This is what I feel led today. This is what I'm trying to convey. There is a pressure in our world to silence our voice. It's taking place right now in China because China, you're not supposed to be having church. There's a, a legal form of Christianity there, but it's very controlled. Most of it has taken place outside of, of what it would consider to be legal. And there is pressure on our apostolic brothers and sisters and brothers to silence voices. And there's a pressure that is arising, even in North America, to silence your voice that is saying, just put a smile on your face, be quiet, go to your job, don't say anything, go to your schools, don't do anything, don't really talk about it, just, just, just. Just be real quiet and just live and let live. And I'm saying here today, that's not going to work. So what we experience here, what we experience here, we have got to take with us out there because the church is not a church service and it's not a building. We are the church. We need to keep our lights shining. I'm not saying be, be mean. I'm not saying be ugly. I'm not saying walk out here down the aisles of the program, or, you know, praise the Lord. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that every time that you feel that little bit, of, mm, don't, don't do that. 
and the Holy Ghost is saying, no, I want you to let it shine, then let it shine. Hallelujah. I said, let it shine. Amen. Let it shine. When the Lord begins to move on you, and I, I'm coming to a quick close, but when the Lord begins to move on you and you feel led to pray for somebody, don't just say, hey, why don't you come to church and, I'll, and my pastor will pray for you. You run into them somewhere, you feel led to pray for them, pray for them right there. Stand in the parking lot. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God touches your body. I know you're feeling sick right now, but God's hand is on you. Let your light shine. Don't, don't, don't get silent because of the world that we live in. Rise above all of that. It's trying to conquer you. You let your light conquer them. God wants to turn the hearts of wicked people. God wants to save your neighbor. God wants to save your family. Don't hide it. Let your light shine in the name of the Lord. Would you stand with me in the name of Jesus? In the name of the Lord. I don't know if we know this song or not, but I got up this morning and I started singing it. I couldn't get it off my mind. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Would you sing it to the Lord? Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. In the name of Jesus. Just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Hallelujah. God, I pray that you touch. Just to be touch all the lives of people in this place today. You strength. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Never receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I invite you to these altars. If you've never been baptized in His name, I invite you to step over to the side and just tell one of our ministers, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name, or I want to know more about it. If you need a healing, you need a miracle, if you can make your way to the altar, we'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, God, release your church. You've empowered us to touch our world. You've empowered us to make a difference in our world. God, help us to take our light from out underneath the basket and let it shine. God, help us to shine. In the name of Jesus, you're going to put people in front of our paths that need a touch from you, that need a healing, that need a miracle. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. God, we're going to encounter backsliders that need your touch. Let your anointing flow through us. Don't let us hide. Don't let us hide the lights. In the name of Jesus. through you. Would you make your way to these altars right now? Draw close to God. If you want God to work through you, you want God to make a difference in your family, make a difference in your co-workers. In the name of Jesus, we're trusting you for a healing. We're trusting you for revival in our family. We're trusting you for revival in our family. In the name of Jesus, trusting you for revival within our family. We're trusting you for revival in our jobs. We're trusting you, God, for revival with the backsliders. Those that have grown cold, we're trusting you. In the name of Jesus, may the fire burn bright in our lives. May the fire burn bright in our lives. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. I want to do two things here. I know some are praying. You can continue praying, but I'm going to do two things here towards the close. One, if you are here and there is somebody recently that has come into your life or maybe somebody who's been around for a while that you have a burden for, they're not living for the Lord fully and you have a passion and burden for them, would you just lift up your hand? Amen. I want us to pray right now. With your hands still lifted up, church, join in with us. I want us to pray right now. God is doing something special. Amen. I know uh, this is not a typical Sunday morning. I took a little time laying a foundation, but I really have felt led of the Lord for almost two months now to talk about this. God is doing something wonderful in our church, and it's going to continue to happen. And But part of that is us engaging and touching the lost. We've been talking about this. I want us to pray right now for the one that we have a burden for, that God will open up the door for us to minister to them. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray right now, God, that you open up doors that nothing can stop. And God, use your people, God, to flow in the spirit and minister to those people to say what needs to be said. In the name of Jesus, loose us from fear, loose us from being timid, and God, let us function in the Holy Spirit to speak to these people what needs to be said. Let us speak words of healing in the name of Jesus. Let us speak words of healing in the name of Jesus. Let us speak words of healing in the name of Jesus. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation in the name of the Lord. Let it be in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to do is if you are new or you've been coming for a while and you want to get involved in small groups, you want to know more information about the church, please, please stop by the booth right on the right-hand side as you're headed out. It's called Next Steps. You'll see it. There's a little sign that says Next Step. Stop by there. Sign up. Membership experience where you'll meet a pastor and his wife. And Sister McKee has been leading us in worship today. We miss our senior pastor, but you can meet them in a pastor experience. It's a wonderful time. Thank you, all of our guests, for being here. Amen. There's many still praying. Let them continue to pray. Let's lift our hands, voices one more time. Thank the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that we have felt here today. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church, God. Thank you for what you're doing, the Pentecostals of Katie. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. Amen. Don't forget, revival starts tonight. Victor Jackson, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 7 o'clock. It's going to be a great services. Amen. Impact your world. Let God work through you in the name of Jesus.